Uh, one year ago, the consistency goal was selected during the 2019 Academy in Milano. Avers Carmi was invited on the stage to better introduce it. Now I'm here again to talk about how is it going after one year of developing it with Kidi. To be honest, I'm still a bit scared, but at least uh, I don't have to go on stage because last year I was a bit embarrassed, as you can see here. Now, uh, let's start immediately with uh, what is consistency anyway. So consistency here means having a single solution for a particular problem rather than many different ones. This applies to application design elements, feature implementation, website structure, and the style and the KDE ecosystem as a whole that unfortunately often some pairs from redundancy. Now, even though, uh, even though I wrote the above, it still feels a bit like jargon. So let's see an actual example of consistency. So um, the search bar. The search bar, it is a trivial task. So we have different, uh, uh, different applications that say it I need a search bar, that sounds easy. I'll just do my own implementation. What could go wrong? And it does go wrong. So we, we can see here that we have disabled buttons and here they're active. We have no arrow here and we have an arrow here. We have arrow here, no arrow here. We have defined as text here and then it becomes inside the text bar. Here the width is not filled and in here, these are flat buttons instead of buttons. This is a whole mess of inconsistencies. So why does this happen? So next slide, okay. Uh, we start with the trivial tasks, implementing a search bar. There's no clear guideline, so the HIG doesn't specify how a search bar should be. We have slightly different use cases, a web browser, a text editor, and so on. So we end up with an inconsistency. Now. First of all, how can we, how can we uh, avoid that from happening? But first of all, we talk about uh, guidelines. We can have some clear and strong human interface guidelines. We could improve the work that was already done on hig.kde.org. The new stuff should be on the HIG before it lands. If I'm implementing a new component, it should be defined in the HIG before I actually land the component. This is very important then we can have a clear design direction. The VDG mainly should have an idea of what design we are moving to. Having mockups here is extremely important. So for this reason, I will have many mockups in these present presentation slides. So uh, also we need le to let different app developers talk to each other. Coordination between application is essential when we are implementing the same feature. Okay. But uh, what can we do with the inconsistencies that we already have? So first of all, uh, we need to find them. I'd suggest to discover all KDE apps. What I mean with this is going to the kdeorg slash applications webpage, going through the list of the whole applications and trying them all out. This uh, takes a lot of time. I did this when I originally proposed the consistency goal. And uh, it really makes you have a feeling of what is consistent and what isn't. It's really an exciting experience that I would suggest everyone would do. So uh, second, uh, I'd suggest to design reusable components. Uh, this is something that we have done many multiple times, uh, implementing a simple component that's reusable in different places. We'll see how we did, we've done that. Finally, we cannot support for non-KDE application because most of the world is outside of KDE. We can make Firefox, GTK application, and so on feel native in Plasma, and that greatly improves the consistency feel uh, of the user. So, but anyway, how does this improve KDE anyway? So first of all, we have better software usability. The users will recognize a pattern in one application and they will be able to use that pattern multiple times. Then we have uh, branding. Uh, the user consistent visual elements will strengthen it because one um, person will see one application will, uh, and then we'll see another and they will recognize that both are done by the same person. So that will help branding. 
then we have less code because by implementing the same uh, component that's used multiple times, we don't have to implement new code each time. And it's also easier to write apps because we can just use the reusable components that we have previously done. So sure, but how did it go? How, uh, how did it work out? Did it actually improve KDE? So let's start with Plasma. So Plasma as a whole, uh, it doesn't have many issues regarding consistency. It's mainly a need of tweak spacing, econ size, and, and so on, when those are used inconsistently throughout applets. There is work on going to fix those incrementally. We can see applet margins were fixed in 5.18, heading was introduced in 5.19, and so on. Uh, so we can actually see now the in incremental updates that we have done. But first of all, uh, first of all, the mockups. So these are the mockups done by Manuel. I think they are absolutely beautiful. And even though we are still missing a couple of things, I think we really got close to implementing them. We have here the notification mockup with the plasmoid heading that was actually implemented in 5.19. We can see it in uh, kickoff, in the system tray, in the notification, and finally in the new widgets uh, sidebar. So this was done consist consistently throughout Plasma. Uh, if a theme was to change the look of the heading, it would apply immediately to all these places. So that's beautiful. Uh, then consistent list in applets. So we had a consistent uh, highlight item that was that was not used in places such as uh, the Bluetooth applet. Now it uses the headlight thanks to the introduction of a new component that is the expandable list. The expandable list is uh, a list where elements can be expanded. So this was quite important because when we decided to do this, we also thought, is there anything that we can add to this expandable? Yes, the comic sans was a joke. Uh, is there anything that we can add to this list uh, so that uh, the, the usability of it will be improved? So we actually added this button that makes the user understand that this list element is able, uh, is, uh, able to collapse and expand. So uh, because we thought we need to do this consistently, we also thought, how can we improve this? So that's awesome. Then we also worked on the media player view, which is now, in my opinion, absolutely gorgeous. We made it consistent with our uh, Elisa application. So that's very nice. And uh, what this slide, uh, yeah, sorry. What's next? Uh, we are in working on panel icon sizes. Now, this was absolutely not easy as it seemed. It generated a lot of discussion and uh, we are still working on it. This is the, the latest proposal that you are seeing that hopefully will be implemented soon. So we've talked about Plasma, so we can try to see uh, what is this situation in applications. So first of all, the application situation is a bit more complex. There are currently two visually different types of application. We have QWidgets ones and uh, Kirogami ones. Editing a QStyle is tough, so it's hard to find people willing to make key widgets up more consistently with Kirigami components. With, there has been a lot of work on creating new Kirigami application. Some fitting use cases not covered by other KDE applications, such as the dialers and the recorder and so on. Uh, this is mainly driven by the development effort in uh, Plasma Mobile. And some other might replace the key widget application. We have done Coco, which is an uh, image viewer. Calgebra has a Kirigami version and so on. There has also been a long VDG discussion, it lasted a year, to decide how tabs and view navigation should look like in main views and sidebar views. We did eventually reach a consensus and we, are working, and we are now working towards a clear direction, which is defined by this mockup. So what do we have here? First of all, we have a new tab look, and then we have these. These are technically tabs as well, but we decided to have a different look using the highlight style because uh, this one, uh, the user can add them, can move them, can close them, but these one are defined by the, 
by the developer of the application. The user cannot drag them around. So they have to uh, have a different style so the user can understand that they are different. This style was actually implemented in Kurigami, if I get to the next slide. Yes, as you can see here, we have it at the bottom when it's in phone mode and uh, it's consistent throughout KDE applications. These, these are not mockups, these are actual applications. So uh, we also are working on the new tab style. Uh, we've added a blue line on the top and uh, it's also important to notice that Kate now uses the QStyle tab. So as soon as the new tab style lands, it will also be used by Kate automatically. So that's awesome. Previously, Kate used a, a inconsistent uh, tab style. So that's a big win for us. What else? Um, next slide. We also made the scroll bars a bit more usable everywhere. They now no longer collapse automatically. They always stay there, so you can easily drag them with the mouse. They also have a separate online to clearly define them. And most importantly, this was done by, uh, this was done uh, throughout KDE application, Kirigami ones and both uh, QWidgets ones. So this was done consistently. So this is great. We've also worked on GDK uh, support. So now JDK application will follow shadows, uh, resize errors, and they are now following the color scheme, which is extremely important. And most importantly, uh, very recently, the decoration. JDK application will now follow your decorations. So uh, they, this will make JDK application feel very native and the user might not even see the difference between Qt and JDK application. So that's very uh, consistency of us. Uh, finally, we are porting KCMs, that is system setting sections to Kurigami. So we have done online accounts, Windows rules, global shortcuts, uh, Bluetooth has just landed and we are working on network manager. Uh, the hand aim is to make system settings pure QML Kurigami uh, in order for it to be completely consistent throughout it. Uh, if that was too much stuff and you didn't listen, overall, how is the consistency goal going? So pretty good, thanks for asking. Uh, many tasks in the original consistency proposal are already addressed, uh, such as the least uh, uh, highlight, some other tasks are being actively worked upon. Some other tasks are waiting for a developer to kick in, especially ones related to QWidgets. So if you um, are a developer who wants to help, this one is a great way. We'll see later how. Finally, some tasks are stuck as they are controversial from a community point of view, so I didn't talk much about those. So if you want to help consistency, first of all, thank you. That's very nice of you. You can give a look to the tasks that we have on the consistency workbook on Fabricator at this link or simply by searching for consistency in Fabricator, you will find it. And most importantly, you can uh, join the VDH, VDG chat on Telegram at the VDG main room or on Matrix. Or you can also ping me personally on Telegram. If you don't know what to do, I can help you and introduce you to the group. So uh, if you don't know, do not know what to do, here are some ideas. First of all, we need more HIG pages. Uh, you have seen the lateral, new lateral navigation component. This is not yet on the HIG. This is very important uh, that it gets there soon. So we also need to implement a sidebar component using Kiwi Jetsup. This is also very important. We need to improve our new Kerigami applications. You can try them out, uh, report bugs, and so on. We need more bug reports for inconsistencies. So you should try many KDE applications and see what's inconsistent throughout them. And we also need more cooperation between application and the working groups. And not only talk about BDG, but often also the PROM group. So you can just pick one and get started. You can write to me personally. I'm, I have free time, usually. And this is pretty much it. So 
do you have any questions in the short notes? Hi, yes, we have two questions. We have three questions. The first yes. question is, how do we con convince developers to switch to standard components instead of using their own ones, especially in conflicts of design or lack of features in component? I think that the best way to convince developers to switch uh, to a standard component is to make that component more both uh, featureful, so you need to have all the features of the problems previous component, so otherwise it will both uh, not be liked by the developer of the application and the users. And uh, another important thing is for it to be pretty, because often we are deceived by the, uh, the look of something, and if we see that it is prettier than our current implementation, we could also think that it works better. Okay. We have another question. How do you manage to strike a good balance between refreshing the visual identity of Plasma over the years while maintaining visual consistency with all the other KDE apps? Uh, this is done because, uh, uh, in theory, Plasma applications uh, don't uh, implement their own styles, but they follow a general style, the Q style, as an example. So by changing the queue style, such as the tabs, uh, that change will take effect on all application at once, such as Kate, as we've seen. What happens sometimes is that single application do not follow this uh, general style as Kate was doing before the patches. So what we need to do is both make the queue style better and make the application follow the queue style. Uh, this is regarding queue widgets. Okay, the other question. Won't porting applications to QML or Kirigami hurt visual consistency WRT Q with its app? <laughs> yes, but the problem is uh, we have to do it anyway because we currently we, you currently have QML Kirigami application. We cannot just say, okay, let's stop developing QML Kirigami because uh, QML Kirigami application are strongly needed for uh, Plasma Mobile. And the fact is, uh, Kirigami was meant to be convergent, so application developed for Plasma Mobile are to be also used on the desktop, which means that we are supposed uh, in the future to use a uh, convergent application than with Kirigami on the desktop. Given that we, we, given this, we will surely have some inconsistency between QML and Kirigami and QWidgets. Uh, so, we will have to address it, and the best way is not to stop porting application to QML Kirigami, but rather to try to choose one framework that uh, we need to use. And currently, that framework is much closer to QML Kirigami. QML is not ready to support our application, of course, but we hope that in the future uh, it will be maybe with uh, the strict QML that should be much RAM. Uh, much less RAM intensive and faster in Qt6. Okay, so our last question is, which framework will be favored in the future, Kirigami or QWidgets? Kirigami cannot cover all use cases. It's mostly a framework for convergent, convergent apps, so apps that should also be used on a tablet or on a phone. Uh, as an example, I do not think that uh, KDevelop or Krita will ever be ported to Kirigami because that is not what Kirigami is made for. Uh, however, uh, it could happen that a new framework speci specifically for QML desktop um, application could appear. So there's still a bit of uncertainty there. Okay, 